Well, we want to welcome you guys to our Young Prophets Chat. It's so awesome to have Apostle Jane Hammond here with us. I mean, I would call you a guest, but you're really not a guest. You're our apostle and mom of our movement. So, yay, we welcome you. So good to see everybody. Glad that you could join us today. So, our first topic today we're going to talk about are dreams and visions. She's a pro in it. I mean, I picked up her book, and I... I'm sometimes the worst at dreams, and so when I picked it up, I'm, I'm learning more tools and, you know, just to put... Look at look at the book. It's got all these bookmarks. <laughs> it actually looks like she's really actually read my book, so yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, not only that, like, it's I'm starting to get better. I'm not really good yet, but I'm starting, and so I'm probably going to have to go through this book for probably a couple years. So, <laughs> so well, makes perfect. Welcome, yes. Apostle Thank Jane. You. And, Thank you. You know, I, one of the things that I would love because I have you know like there are probably a lot of um, people because of young prophets yes. have dreams and visions not just that but prophetic people I mean there's that's such right. a prophetic generation that's out there so let's like why why did you even read because this is a second mm -hmm. Edition. So why did you yeah. third third? Yeah. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Well, it's a really good one. Thank um, you. So what would you tell them? Just why you wrote this book? Yes. You know, okay. So you know when I when I originally sat down to actually write what is in this book uh, was actually in the early '90s, and we had been pioneers in the early prophetic movement. And you know Acts chapter two says, "In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh." And the result is going to be your sons and daughters will prophesy. Yeah. We all know that part. But then it goes on to say your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And so we started noticing that um, the, the, the greater the release of the prophetic anointing, the more people started having prophetic wow. dreams. Now, when I got saved in the mid-70s, nobody really talked about prophecy. Nobody really talked about hearing the voice of God in a dream. But when I was away at Bible college, it was the year 1979, and uh, I'd only been saved for just a few years, and I'd gone off to Christ for the Nations. And during my first semester there, I had a dream. Uh, and during that dream, I saw my younger brother get very sick and mm -hmm. die. And it was, I, you know, you felt all the emotions from the dream, just like you would expect, you know. And I woke up and I had tears rolling down my face. My pillow was wet with the, with the tears. And I laid there in bed, and the, my first thought was, was that real or was that a dream? Wow. And so I'm, I'm sure that probably some of you have probably had that feeling like, you know, is that it was that a dream? And I realized it was a dream and I laid there and I began to console myself the way that we've taught children to be consoled when you have a bad dream. And I began to tell myself it was just a dream. It was just a dream. And suddenly I heard the voice of God say to me, it's not just a dream. Wow. Get up and pray. Wow. And this was my, I mean, I had I had never heard anybody tell me that God could speak in a dream. And so I got up and I prayed for my brother. The next morning, before I left for school, my mom called from another state. And she said, I'm so glad to catch you. I need to tell you what happened last night. My heart started just pounding. Mm -hmm. And she said, last night while your brother was deep in the woods on a camping trip, um, his appendix ruptured. And by the time they got him to the hospital, it took them a long time to get him to the hospital. He was almost dead. Wow. And I realized in that moment, oh my gosh, God gave me a dream, dream. Yeah. that told me how to pray. So I thought it was like one of those once in a lifetime experiences that, you know, you just kind of go, wow, that was a wow experience. But about two years later, I had a similar dream. I was married, living in Southern California, and I had a similar dream about the life of that same brother. And in this dream, I saw him coming through an intersection on his way to school. Uh, somebody didn't stop at the red light in my dream. Uh, they hit him right on the driver's side of the car, oh. just slammed into him on the driver's side of the car with such force that it rolled his car over three times, crushed his car, and he was killed instantly. This is all in the dream. This is all in the dream. Okay. And I mean, he, the car was crushed, he was killed instantly. And I woke up just like before, tears rolling down my face. But because I had this experience where I knew, hey, God can speak in a dream, I thought, you know, I'm going to get up and pray. So I got up and I began to walk the floor and intercede for my brother. And I want you to know the next morning, on his way to school, he came through an intersection. Wow. Somebody did not stop at the red light. They T-boned him right on the driver's side with such force that his car, in fact, rolled over three times. His car was completely crushed. Wow. But the difference is he walked out of that wreck without even a wow. scratch. Wow, wow. And I began to realize, you know what, how many times has God been speaking to me? And I didn't know it. 
So I started searching the scripture and I found there's over 50 times in the scripture where God speaks to somebody in a dream or a vision. And I started realizing this is not a sideline issue. This is a main issue, a main uh, way that God communicates to people. Well, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes, but no. you know, we, before then, had you read any books on dreams? Never. Or, there were not any books on dreams. Really? When I wrote this book, there was one book by a man that was a Christian that had studied, but he studied at a psychological institute, so there was a lot of psychology mixed into it. So when I wrote this book, yeah. as far as I know, it was the first time that anybody had written a book on the subject of prophetic dreams and, and what visions. year did you write this? I think, my, I think my first one came out in 93. Okay. And then it um, got published again in 96 with Regal, and then we just did a, another revision of it. But um, back in those days, I mean, back in the, the 70s and 80s, and er, in the early 90s, I started having dreams, just one right after the next, and God would show me um, all kinds of natural events. God would show me weather patterns. You and I love weather. Okay. <laughs> uh, God would show me storms that were coming. I had this dream of a of a winter hurricane that hit the Panhandle of Florida where we live, and it was like um, dropping snow and blizzard conditions. Oh wow, that would all be this, awesome! All this kind of crazy stuff. Oh, there was all this snow, and, and I saw the storm go up. Uh, through Alabama, through the the uh, through the Appalachians, and hit the Northeast and dumped like massive amounts of snow. And then the dream went on and showed me all this other stuff that was happening. Well, I want you to know, five weeks after I had that dream, I've got it in my dream journal. They call it a winter hurricane. March the thirteenth, nineteen ninety three, wow. hit the Panhandle of Florida. Had blizzard conditions, ninety mile an hour winds. Dropped five inches of snow here, twenty something inches of snow in Birmingham, fifty something inches of snow in Pennsylvania. And then I was wow. like, I was like, oh my gosh, what else did the dream say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so God gave me some insight. So I think that people just have to realize that, and especially young prophets. Um, in Numbers chapter 12, it says, if there is a prophet among you, I will speak to him in visions and make wow. myself known to him in a dream. So we need to understand that um, these are ways that God wants to speak to us, and chances are it's ways that he's already speaking to us, but we may not recognize it. Wow, I love that. I love that. And, you know, just what what do you feel like in the last years that more people are getting dreams. I kind of almost feel like we're in a season where the body of Christ is getting so many dreams. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like everyone dreams? Uh, well, scientists actually say everybody dreams. Okay. Um, you have to uh, have to look at the, the science of the dream life. And of course, there's been uh, psychologists study dreams, sleep specialists study dreams. And they actually say that if somebody doesn't dream, that usually um, it's an indication that uh, something is not quite right in their life. Really? Yes. Um, so everybody actually dreams probably six to eight dreams a night. It doesn't mean that all those dreams are from God. Um, I don't personally believe that every dream is a dream from God, but I do believe that many dreams are from God. Um, and so uh, everybody dreams. The problem is, is that we actually have a chemical in our brain that takes things out of a short-term memory into a long-term memory. Okay, for example, when you walk through the mall, you're looking at this store and that store, and oh, that's a cute outfit, or look what she's wearing, or you know, you just you observe a lot of things, but all that goes into your short-term memory unless for a purpose you purpose to remember it. You purpose to record oh. it, you purpose to rehearse it, you purpose, and then when that happens, when that function happens, that a chemical kicks in in the brain that takes something out of your short-term memory bank and prints it into your long-term memory bank. So you can have dreams, 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 but if you're not making a purposeful decision to record or to remember the dream, it's going to stay in the short term and you're going to lose it. Last, last year, I think it was, my husband, who's heard me preach on dreams a hundred times, I always say, get up and write them down. Write down, record your dreams, or use your phone. Put your dream in your phone. But he had this dream last year, and he said, honey, I had this amazing dream last night. And I was like, oh, really? I'm like, because he, he like never dreams. And I'm like, tell me, tell me this prophetic dream that you had. And he said, well, the Lord said to me, here are the keys that you need to lead the nation into a place of awakening and oh. revival. And I'm sitting there going, and he said, yeah, that's all I remember. <laughs> Have I taught you nothing? You have to write it 
write it down. Well, I might be convicted a little bit, but I need to write down mine a little bit more. We kind of change nations. Yeah, already. that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so in in like you know, there's so many people here. We have, they're gifting maybe different prophetically. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like you have prophetic evangelists. You have people that right. are like pr- pastors and prophets mm-hmm. and that kind of that flow. When it comes to particularly like winning souls mm-hmm. and like nation changing. I know that's a big topic. We can't right. cover that all well. Here, but what's kind of this this subject is probably never been more relevant to nation changing than it is right now. Okay. Let me give you just a couple of statistics. Okay. Right now, uh, throughout uh, Africa and the Middle Eastern nations, there is revival that is taking place in really? predominantly Muslim nations. And in these nations, missiologists, uh, missiologists uh, that ha- are studying revival, studying missions in those lands, are they have a few different um, statistics, but I'm talking about mainstream evangelical um, mi- mission experts are, are validating the fact that in these Muslim nations, when somebody preaches the gospel to a Muslim, so many times, and I'll give you a statistic, but so many times they will say, oh, I know this man, Jesus. I see wow. him in my dreams. And he's actually known as the man in white. Now, uh, in parts of Africa, the statistics are about 40 to 50% of new converts have seen Jesus in their dreams before they receive salvation. That's a huge number. Somebody, and then I know in Iran, um, somebody that's planting churches in Iran, he told me that 70% of their new converts are receiving uh, dreams with Jesus. They call him the man in white. Wow. And the man in white comes to them and, and he might tell them, you need to go here or you might need to go there. And they, you know, Muslims believe in prophets. Yeah. You know, and they actually believe Jesus was a prophet. So they're going to do what he said. And then somebody's there to preach the gospel and say, he's not just a prophet, he's the savior. Yeah. And I mean, I, I could sit here for the next several hours and tell you stories about Muslim people that are receiving dreams from Jesus going to a particular place, going to... And so it is, I think, a core of what God is doing, particularly in very closed nations. So if God's doing that there, hey, I think he can do it here in America. I think he can start preaching, to, appearing to atheists. And here's the scriptural precedent for it. In the book of Daniel, the very first person in the book of Daniel to receive a prophetic dream from God was not the holy prophet Daniel. It was the pagan violent king Nebuchadnezzar he had dreams Daniel was there to interpret the dreams so you say oh well this really isn't my thing well see I think that believers need to learn the language of dreams the symbolic language of dreams and how God speaks in dreams not just so that we know what God's saying to us but so that we can be positioned as Joseph's and Daniel's to interpret the dreams of the leaders of business leaders, of community leaders, of nation leaders that are out there that God's speaking to. Yeah. When I'm on a plane, a lot of times the conversation yeah. will come around to what are you doing? And I'm saying, oh, I'm going and I'm doing a workshop to help people understand their dreams. I don't, I haven't said anything religious yeah. in that conversation. I can be sitting next to an atheist and they'll say, oh, really? Well, I had this dream. Wow. And God will prophetically open up their life to me. So it's a tool, I believe, that every prophetic leader, regardless of... Um, a, a fivefold ministry calling, and regardless, even if you're not even positioned as a fivefold minister, I believe God wants every single believer to learn to hear His voice. Yeah. Okay. I. I. Okay. So I need help. <laughs> I need help, and so there's probably other people on the other end of this needs help too. Since you know, people are like, "Hey, Apostle Jane Hammond, she's a pro with this." Mm-hmm. You know, for mm-hmm. me, you know, my, my I have a really high seer gifting, so I see a lot. Mm-hmm. And, like, I tend to understand soon. I see it what it is. Mm-hmm. But my dreams are challenged. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. maybe I'm challenged, <laughs> you know. So, so what would be kind of a prayer or outside of your book, which is mm-hmm. such an incredible, it's probably one of the best books I've read. It's just very, read. Practical, very, yeah. very practical. Yeah, outside yeah. of that, what are some things maybe I could pray? Mm-hmm. Like, there are people here that... I mean, I, I, I have so many people who are like, hey, I feel the same way you do, Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm-hmm. I can have a vision and I know what it is, but mm-hmm. my dreams are a little... Yeah. Uh, is that like an analytical thing? Well, how should we pray about this? How- well, the first thing you, that you might need to, to know is that, number one, not every dream is from God. Okay. Okay, so in the process of learning to discern the voice of God, uh, you probably will go through a, a time where I will challenge you to write down whatever dreams you remember when you wake up. 
Okay. Good. Now, Good. don't make yourself crazy with this, okay? Because, I mean, when I start, first started doing this, I would be getting up like five times a night, writing down my dreams, and my husband would be like, honey, take a break, turn off the light. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I made it a little crazy, okay? So, uh, so don't make yourself crazy with it. But if you roll over at night and you have a real strong impression, grab your phone, speak the dream into the phone, go back to sleep. You don't have to get up and, and unless God says, hey, get up and pray, you yeah, don't have to yeah. do that, okay? So, and then you have to learn to discern kind of which are God's dreams and which are not. I will tell you that, and hopefully this will bring comfort to some of you, is that I have lots of dreams that I have recorded that I don't have interpretations to. Really? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm sort yeah. of feeling better in this. Yeah, so like, <laughs> but, but I'm telling you that there's times that all of a sudden I'll go, wait a minute, I had a dream about that. Oh, that's good. About a week ago. That's why it's important to write it down. And sometimes what will happen is when you're writing it down, you may get part of the message in one dream, part of a message in a dream a week later, part of the message really? in a dream a month later. And that way, if you've got it written down or you've got it recorded, you're like, oh, wait a minute. This goes with this and this goes with this. And now I see what God is saying. Wow. Okay? So that's the first step. The, 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 the second thing is you have to realize, and I mean, there's demonic dreams obviously not from God. There's soulish dreams that are soul issues that are coming up or just coming out of a memory. But there's spiritual dreams. There's dreams where God's speaking to your spirit. There's dreams where your spirit man is reaching out, crying out to God, uh, in interceding through your dreams. There's intercession dreams where you're literally interceding through the dream uh, and, and connecting to God. There's dreams where God teaches you. There's all wow. kinds of dreams. But if we, the first step is, number one, God is speaking in dreams. Okay. Number two, not every dream is from God, but a lot of them are. Yeah. And number three, some dreams are very literal. Some dreams are symbolic. Wow. Okay, so when you have a literal dream, like my dreams about my brother, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, hey, that was, a, that was a spiritual dream. But you know when Jesus taught people, he taught them through the use of parables, which were all these word pictures. And I, read, read them again sometime and just notice what the crowd is doing. The crowd's going, wow, that's awesome. I have no idea <laughs> what he just said. <laughs> because and that's why Jesus would say, he who has ears to hear, let oh, him that's hear. Good. That's so good. we can have all these great dreams, but if we don't have ears to hear, how are we going to hear? So that's why I take you through some very practical steps about how to take something that's symbolic Okay. Break it down, work a process with it, and have ears to hear it. It can't just be like, oh, God, show me what it means. Sometimes you have to work a process step by step. You've heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, how do you interpret a dream? Sometimes it starts one symbol at a time. That's one good. Scene at I a time. love that. I and, love that. Yeah. Well, okay, so our time is getting away from <laughs> us. So let's let's talk about, there's so many people that are called to nations. Obviously, we have, you know, so many young prophets that are coming right. in. And so when they dream, how do they determine, I mean, I'm still learning this in my life, but mm -hmm. how do they determine what may be, because when I'm reading your book, you talk about dual meanings, you talk about, how do they, you know, kind of separate what's mm -hmm. personal mm -hmm. from a dream or what's actually for a nation? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that I think that as in everything prophetic, you have to answer that question about whatever, however God speaks to you. Okay, God, okay. is this a personal word for me? Is this a personal word for the body? And sometimes the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's yes, it's for you. Let me deal with you about this so that now you can be equipped and qualified to deal with the body. When I go to nations, um, so many times when I'm in a nation, um, I actually pray. I ask God, I say, Lord, give me a dream. And I ask specifically for dreams because dreams bypass um, everything that you might know consciously. Okay, everything that you know consciously and really taps into something that we know is pure spirit. And I, I've actually been able to know things about nations through a dream because God shows it to me in a dream. So when I go into a nation, I'll say, God, show me what I need to know about this nation that is part of my assignment while I'm here. Um, I'm all for research, I'm all for study, I'm all for looking at mm -hmm. history, but I don't do any of that until I've heard from God. Wow, and after good. I've heard from God, then I go in and say, okay, now, now that I have this word from God, let me find out how this applies in history, how this applies in their society, how does this apply to the place that the church is, and it really helps to bring a cohesiveness to it. 
just in, you know, I had a vision when uh, years ago when I first made one of my first trips overseas and we went to, uh, we went to, uh, flew into the Netherlands. And it was one of those trips that uh, we did very last minute. It was like we found out that Bishop Hammond was going and he didn't have anybody going with him and he was sick. So we were like, let's buy tickets, let's just go with them, carry his bags, help him prophesy, do whatever. And so it was my first experience with jet lag. And I get into the service and I have this vision that night where I see the, the demonic principalities over Northern Europe. Wow. And one of them actually turns around and looks at me and tells me his name. And I, I can't go into all the details about that, but I was just like, whoa. And then it was just like everything closed up. I had no point of reference for any of this. Had that happened to you before? Never, never, oh, okay. nothing like that. But I want you to know that as I took just that probably five second vision, I could probably write a book out of what God showed me prophetically, wow. historically. And when I presented it to the people, um, so many things that I presented to them, God has called this nation to be this, God has called the nation to be that, and the surrounding nations. And they said, well, you may not realize historically this is what happened. Historically, that's what happened. Wow. And the word of the Lord came in, and they knew I was an outsider. They knew that I didn't know anything about the nation in the natural. So they knew they heard the pure word of God, pure heart of God for their nation, and they acted on it. So it was an amazing wow. key that opened up the hearts of God. So did you, do you feel like with that gifting, maybe you're, you're potentially, obviously you're a prophet to the nations, but yeah. is that like a times and season type of prophet? It, it because is. Because you go into the nation mm -hmm. to tell them what God's saying for that time, right? Right. right. So I, I believe any, any time we go into nations, kind of how I position myself is I try to hear what God's heart is for the church, what God's heart is for the land. I try to hear uh, what demonic principality or powers or strategy the enemy's employing to try to hold them back. I try to hear what is God's decree over the nation. And then at the same time, I try to hear, now what has the enemy tried to counter decree wow. against that nation to try to keep God's decree, God's, God's redemptive process, God's redemptive call on that land to keep it from coming to pass. Wow. And, and wow. so th in, in releasing that into the atmosphere, I, I'm not just releasing a word that has a momentary impact, but I'm hoping to release a word that gives leaders tools to be able to take that word, break it down, and learn to address. Maybe, maybe you're going to deal with a mindset. Maybe it's a demonic mindset that's in the land that God shows us prophetically. Well, they've got to go in then. They've got to untangle how that thing has affected the minds of God's people to keep them from advancing. Wow. So. Wow, I love that. And, you know, I think, like, um, you know, when God's doing that in the nations, that he's raising up so many prophets. And we believe, you know, as you're the mom, you know, I feel like that kind of comes down even more mm -hmm. on the young prophets that are out there, mm -hmm. you know, God's raising up. And I, I do believe that there is, God is going to send us one prophet from every nation of the world, you know, because we need, we need family, we need healthy things. And just to even be model your lifestyle modeling mm -hmm. towards our young prophets with, that are called to the nations mm -hmm. is incredible. So we're, we're going to start wrapping up here. I, you know what I do want you to share? I keep on thinking about this. Let's talk, um, since we're talking about nations and prophets and dreams and visions, let's talk about the, um, the four horsemen of awakening. Okay. Let's, let's do that. Okay. That's Australia, right? That was when I, it, it came to me in Australia, but I believe that it's a word for our nation. I believe it's a word for different nations. But um, just to, to kind of lay it out, I had a dream my first night when we were in Australia, 2015. Yeah, 2015. And, uh, and in the dream, I was uh, approached by these four angels that represented themselves to me as the four horsemen of awakening. And their arms were linked together. They were all dressed in white. Their arms were linked together. And they basically um, uh, approached me as a united force. And they said, we are the force that will bring an awakening. Uh, the, the, we are the, the team that is necessary to bring awakening into the nations and into the generations. And so each one of them took a moment to introduce themselves to me, and they were basically uh, angels that had been stewarding over movements for the last 50 years or so. Um, there, was a, there was an angel of, uh, of, the, uh, of the apostolic, there was an angel of the prophetic, there was an angel of prophetic evangelism, there was an angel of, uh, of outpouring that was present during the 60s and 70s, the, you know, the charismatic movement. 
And that angel in particular, each one of them had something to say, but that one actually said that he was getting ready to pour out on the denominational churches again. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a kind of a, an outpouring come that's going to be very much like the charismatic movement and is going to really update people and in, 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 in give them an opportunity to come into revival and to come oh, into a place yes. of awakening. And so as this dream kind of progressed, um, I was on a golf course and uh, uh, interestingly, and um, the angels, I don't know how they did it, but they, as one, they hit this ball um, that kind of went down the fairway and it bounced right in front of a giant crocodile. Now, here's where I knew that I was in Australia, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the crocodiles of Australia. But I knew what I was seeing is I was seeing this Leviathan spirit yeah. that was really being stirred up in the earth. And I saw the angels come and approach this ball, and you know, and it was. All they, all they had to do was just go shoo or whatever angels can do, and they would get that Leviathan out mm -hmm. of the way. But I knew the angels were waiting for something. And as I watched in the dream, I knew what they were waiting for was us. Wow. wow. And that we were the ones that had to rise up. We were the ones that had to respond. We had to deal <coughs> with Leviathan. Leviathan wow. is, a, is an evil, demonic yeah. spirit. It's a spirit with twisted communication. It's a, a word. It's a spirit that uh, generates, if you will, fake news. <laughs> it's a. It's a we won't spirit. Go there. <laughs> it's a spirit that twists hearts, twists communications, and it's a very, very evil spirit yeah. rooted in pride. And I knew that what the Lord was saying is that the church really was responsible. So the angels were waiting on us. So as we rose up, and as I was standing there, I was like do something make you know and let's let's get forward let's get moving forward and i could see at the very end of this um the very end of this fairway a clubhouse that was full of the generations that came before wow. and they were shouting they were saying come on finish it let's do this let's finish this mm -hmm. and i knew that what god was saying is that we're in a real finishing season here in the earth and that we've got wow. to contend with the enemies that are in our path and that the angels from heaven are ready to work with us. So. Wow, wow, such an incredible story. We loved having Apostle Janie. She's always welcome. I love her having, I love having her here. Um, it, so dreams and visions, minus my little markings here, but dreams and visions, you can get it on christianinternational.com. You can also get it on Amazon. Pick that up. Also, um, this is just a little bit different. This is her, she has a DVD and CDs. Yes. Um, this, and you can also get that at christianinternational.com. Apostle Jane, it's been so, so fun much. having you. Um, I'm sure we'll talk another time and just talk more about dreams and visions. I think, you know, just the anointing. I just feel the anointing for nations and yes. prophets. So so we'll talk about that. Thank you for joining us so much. Oh, and um, if you guys need anything, you know, to you can go to Elisha org or you can visit us at our Facebook page. All right, thanks so much. Have a good you guys.